A non-governmental organization, Camelite Prisoners Interest Organization, has raised concerns about the call to governors to sign execution warrants of 3,008 inmates who are on death row in the various custodial centers across Nigeria. Now, recently, the Minister of Interior, Raul Faragbachala, had urged state governors to sign the death warrants of inmates as a means of decongesting correctional facilities nationwide. The executive director of CAPIO, um, Reverend Father Jude Isiguzo, however, said that such a statement was unfair and a violation to the right of life. He stated that it would be miscarriage of justice to sign the death warrant while repentant insurgents and bandits who commit grievous crimes are ignored or even granted amnesty. Well, joining us to discuss this is Maxwell Okbara, he's a legal practitioner, and Shegu Shopitan, who's of who's a good governance and advocate and he's of ACT Network. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank Great. you. Mary, I'm good to see you. Yeah. I, I'm going to start with you, Shegu, because you have, have, have fallen in the category of, you know, civil society organizations and people who advocate for, um, you know, justice and against the ultimate punishment. Now, I'm, 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 I'm certain that constitutions across the world have been um, tweaked and retweaked to address the issue of the ultimate punishment. Um, but in Africa and in Nigeria, we still have, um, you know, that in uh, our, our law books. But why, why do we still advocate for people on death row to um, face either a firing squad or be killed? Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Yeah, you know, um, it's... Um it's, this, this is an ideological conversation, Brian, um, and I can tell you that um, if you call, you know, maybe a hundred people or just do a sampling of ten people, you probably will find a good number saying, yeah, I mean, if you do the crime, then, you know, there's the time. If the time happens to be death penalty, so be it. There are people out there who don't see anything wrong with the death penalty, and I would say they have a point to the degree that everybody has a right to hold their opinion. Um, I personally, you know, this is my personal view, believe that nobody is ultimately evil and uh, nobody is irredeemable. And therefore, uh, when you kill a person because the person has committed a crime, no matter how grievous or heinous, you deny them the opportunity for redemption. And I'm not talking of redemption from a religious point of view. You know, from the you deny them the opportunity to um, make up for the crimes that they committed, given the right atmosphere, given the right grooming, and all of that. How do you make up for a crime like killing a person? I mean, whether it's first degree or yeah. second degree manslaughter, yeah. or it's yeah. actually you know outright murder. Um, yeah. How do you make up? How 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 is that redeemable? That, that's why I say it's an ideological issue, you know. So um, it's, it's, um, there, there are so many answers to that, you know. So can I do so much good with my life that the crimes that I committed in the past um, can be made up for? The life that I took and denied um, the right to continue to live, can I make up for that by doing so much good? It's an ideological issue. So for me... Honestly, Miriam, uh, that wouldn't be the issue. I think, like you rightly said when you started, um, if you look across the world, in fact, if you look at the United States of America in particular, there are some states that still um, um, advocate and have the, the death penalty, capital punishment, the ultimate price in their laws. And there are some states in that same country that don't. You know, and it goes across the world like that. Some countries simply don't believe in the death penalty and some do. It's an ideological thing, and it's for me personally, it's neither here nor there, especially in this issue. What I find particularly um, disturbing is that the person advocating or, or urging um, governors to, to sign death warrants for people on death, on the death, death row, um, the reason he's given for it is, is mind boggling, it's unbelievable. You know, the reason he's given is to decongest our prisons, kill people on death row. That makes no sense, you know, because it makes absolutely zero sense. And, and I really hope that 
the minister would get the opportunity to see some of these arguments and some of these debates and understand that when we say it makes no sense, it's not an insult to his person. It's just that the argument actually makes no sense. Okay. Um, I'll come back to you. Just, just, just put a pin there. I'll come back to you. Let me go to Maxwell. Maxwell, you're a lawyer. So let's look at it from the legal perspective. Our law books do, of course, um, permit that if you have done the crime, just as Shagun said, you have to do the time. Some people would advocate for a life imprisonment, and others would say, you know, um, kill him off because somebody he, because he killed someone or he deserves to be killed. And and most people are afraid in other countries. I do not know about Nigeria if we do have the paroling system where some people who are supposed to do life after a couple of years or maybe ten years they're giving parole for good behaviour. And sometimes families of those who lost loved ones to the evil act or the dastardly act uh, seem like, you know, justice was not done. But from a, from a legal perspective, paint us a picture. Um, there are governors I know that have refused, for example, to sign, you know, these death warrants, making it very difficult for anybody to be put on death row or to be killed. Um, do you think that they're doing this deliberately because they are... Maybe not speaking out, but silently in support of, or, or against, rather, the death penalty. Well, uh, I'm just like, as you rightly pointed out, I'm talking from a local point of view. And we should also remove morality in, um, in the statement made by the Honorable Minister of Interior, Arebo uh, Sola. That is the law. Remember that the law said, if you intentionally taking away somebody's life, that person's life will also be taken in line with, uh, with the law. In line with the law. Now, court has said that this particular person committed this crime. The person now appealed to it to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has given the final or said the person should die by hanging. Now, was there a remedy? Yes. What is the remedy? Amnesty. By who? Either the governor or the president. Now, if the governor felt that anyway, this person can be of good behavior, I'm ready to I'm ready to give him uh, what do you call it? Uh, pardon. So be it. He can go ahead and do that. Nobody is against it. If you are not going to give the person pardon, why are you keeping the person? Why are you keeping the person for so, how many so years? So is it illegal for governors to withhold their signatures to these death penalties? Is it a, is it a crime? It, does no, the, no, the, 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 does law, the Constitution the, criminalize it? The, the, the law did not say, the law did not state the time limit within which the governor should, ask, should sign the execution warrant. So, but the point, the, the, point the, the, the Honorable Minister is, is, uh, uh, is making is that you are not giving the presidential pardon. And we are not, why are you keeping them there? That is, is a very simple thing. So now, I mean, uh, on the issue of removing a death uh, penalty, I don't, uh, I don't uh, subscribe to that idea. Mm -hmm. Somebody, you saw a, you saw a, a, a 12 year old child who is a, um, I mean, uh, uh, Hawking, you, you rape the girl. After raping the girl, you use your, um, what do you call it, hole, your farm hole, kill the girl. And bury the girl. And at the, at the end of the day, when you are convicted, somebody said, I'm a presidential pardon. What are you, whom are you pardoning? You, 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 you go, you, you, you enter into somebody's house, you, 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 you looted everything, you raped the wife, use bottle, bottle, broken bottle, and strut into the uh, private part of the woman, and the woman bleeded and died. And they convicted the person, you are saying, talking about, I'm a, and but, pardon, pardon but for are all the people on death row really um, responsible? And, and, and you might not have the answer because there are people who have accidental discharge, you know, no, mistakenly no, no, shoot, no, 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 straight no, bullets. No, 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 don't, um, no, no, those. Go ahead. Can I, those ones can be understandable. It's discretional. If somebody, a police officer, uh, out of a mistake, you shot a gun and the bullet now, strange bullet and what have you. Those ones are understandable. We are talking about intentional art. Now you 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 can see what is going on. A kidnapper. You collected. You met a particular family. They sold all they have. 
pay you after collecting the money. You still kill the medical doctor. So when the people are bringing moral morality into this thing, the justice is a two-way thing. Are you considering those families that you, you take away their, law, their, their, their breadwinner? Is anybody considering them? Let us remove morality in all these things. If you intentionally, the law said if you intentionally take away somebody's life, that person's life will be taken. It's mm. a very simple thing. Since we're, talking, since, since we're talking legal and we're also talking morality, let's look at the this, this statement of um, the minister, um, Ralph Aregbeshala, talking about the fact that he wants to decongest the prisons. Um, should we be talking about um, decongesting the prisons in the same breath with killing people off? Of course, those people are on death row, yes, but... Is it not the responsibility of the government to see to it that our prisons are good enough, are enough to house these prisoners? Because we're sending them to prison. We have to make accommodations for them. Have you visited a prison lately? What is the condition of the prisons? Should that be the problem of governors as to, as it should be the problem of the federal government? Yes. Now, uh, the, 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 the point is that we, we, the, the minister is trying to face the fact that he has this. He's the minister for interior. And the correctional center is under him. They are looking for a way to make it better. They are looking for a way to decongest the prison. This person has been convicted. He has been there for the past 30 years in the death row. Do not you know that they're punishing the person? You are even punishing the person. How uh, about, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know if it's just the death row inmates that are congesting the prisons. I have done um, several uh, reports. Hold on. Uh, on on mm. prisons. And I have seen several, I'm not saying a handful, several prisoners who were just picked up by police officers and something that was, you know, pinned on them. And they, has, they still haven't gotten their day in court. And they've been left there for months, some for years. Shouldn't the, the minister be looking at those issues in dealing with those people that have not had their day in court instead of dealing with the few people who are on death row? It's in comparison. You cannot separate one. It's, a, it's in comparison. I'm looking at the percentage of these people who are in, in, in those facilities as compared to the guys who are on death row. Even if, even if they are one, even if, even if they are two, even if they are three. What exactly. How, what, what, what change will three people? What change will three people on uh, death row I'm do in, uh, in in changing the phase or ex, uh, giving giving room in, in 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 the prison system? Three, as compared to how many people who are there? Do you know that Nigeria? Do you know that my federal government is feeding them? Those people on the uh, death row. Do you know that federal government is feeding them? Now, what we are talking about is that is in comparison. As you are talking about how to reduce the number of awaiting trial. We also talk about... Uh, what those, should we prioritize okay. more? Innocent people is, is it, or people who have course, already no. been convicted? What should be all, our priority? All of, them, all, of the, all, all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> okay. Let me go back to Shagun. Shagun, I'm going to ask the same question I asked him. What should we be prioritizing? And, and, and really, whether it's an issue of morality oh, you know or best. common sense. Shagun, what should we be prioritizing? We have more people who are innocent, who have not had their day in court, who have just been abandoned in these prison systems. And we're having more and more of them. We see, we see and hear these testimonies every day of people who didn't do anything. They were going about their businesses and they end up in prison and still haven't had their day in court. Um, the number of those people who are seemingly, um, what's the word? They're not guilty until proven um, differently. And the number of guys who are on death row, what should the government be prioritizing since we're talking decongesting the prisons? Shall Ryan, I? Um, yeah. You know, this, like I said, I mean, look, I, I, understand, I understand the point that... Oh, Shagun, I think that you're, you're we're having problems you with your connection. Me. Let's try Go again. Ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so I, I'm saying, if you look at the statistics, right, um, you have 68,000 inmates in Nigeria. Out of that 68,000, Miriam, um, it's only 3,000 that are on death row, you know, 3,000. So that's, that's, less than, that's less than 5%. It's about 3% or something like that that are on death row. By comparison, you have 50,000 51,000 out of 68, Miriam, are awaiting trial. Now, 
if I wanted to decongest the prisons, really, you know, what should I what should I do? So what the minister has basically done is he has looked at the easiest um, the path of least resistance to solve a real problem. Unfortunately, that path of least resistance um, um, is, 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 is he's going to tread upon human lives. He's going to be killing people off who perhaps might actually not be guilty. You know, we, we have to understand really? is he, is he really, another point, we, right? We have, to go, we have to go, but really, is he killing people because these people already are on death row? They are, of course, that's their fate, really. It's just that I know, it's taking longer Marianne, than it should. Marianne, I know. What, what I'm, yes, what, I, what I'm basically saying is that if you wanted to decongest the prisons, why don't you start from people that haven't even had their day in court and, they're, and they are the predominant majority of the people in prisons. They represent over 80, 70 percent of the prison population are awaiting trial. Why do you want to look at the three percent that are on death row and kill them, end their lives? Yes, they've been convicted. Yes, they are waiting to be killed. But you have others that you can still deal with to solve your problem. What about the issue of um, presidential pardon? What about the ones that have been on death row for 20 years and are now better and there's evidence that they're better? Why don't you think of releasing them? For, you know, I don't know, you know, so there's an ideological side to this, but there's also a political side that, you know, well, no I wish we had time to go on uh, and on on this conversation, but unfortunately we have to go. Uh, I can hear the guy saying we have to go. Thank you very much. Um, Maxwell um, Okpara is a legal practitioner and Shegu Shopita is of Act Network. Thank you, gentlemen, for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us on this conversation. We'll be back tomorrow with more on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Have a good evening.